We are joined now by David Williams, a professor at Harvard University. Thanks for coming and talking with us. It's good to be with you. Let's talk about health equity. While the U.S. has made much progress towards the leading health indicators, there are still many disparities. Can you talk about what you think some of the key factors are, why we still have so much uh, inequality in health equity? Um, let me comment on the inequities. Uh, the biggest inequity is that the U.S. is doing poorly in terms of health. Uh, we spend, according to the World Bank, 50% of the money spent on medical care globally each year is spent in the US, and we are less than 5% of the world's population, consume one half of its medical resources, and rank near the bottom of the industrialized world on health. So that's the first one. All of us could be more healthy than, than we currently are. Um, but secondly, there are large gaps in health by place, by race and ethnicity, and by socioeconomic status. We have made progress on, on many of, of the gaps, but they are still large and we still have a very long way to go. What priorities must be addressed for the U.S. to make real progress? We have to address the fundamental underlying drivers of health. In the U.S., we tend to emphasize medical care, but our healthcare system functions as a repair shop that does a good job of taking care of us once we get sick, but it's not a driver of whether we get sick or not in the first place. So we really have to think of how we build health into healthcare, but build health into the places where Americans spend most of their time. Our homes, our neighborhoods, our schools, our workplaces, and where we try to build this culture of health that makes a healthy choice an easy choice. What are effective strategies for addressing racism as a driving force of the social determinants of health? Um, racism is a powerful driver of inequities in health both through structural institutional mechanisms as well as through interpersonal um, interaction. Um, I, I think the first step is to recognize that there is a problem. Um, many Americans are in denial that, that racism still exists today. They think of racism as a, a relic of the past, so we have to um, acknowledge that there is a problem. And then we need to work both in terms of uh, creating environments um, that are more supportive, uh, that are more civil, that are more respectful uh, of each other and, and of persons of different backgrounds. It's not only racism, is not the only ism that is a problem, it's certainly a big one. Um, but I think we also have to look at our policies and our institutions and the, the racism that is deeply embedded in the ways in which many of our institutions operate and, and with a commitment to dismantling them and creating new policies that truly support and afford um, equity for all. What are some resources for communities to access on how they can protect the rights and health of immigrant families? Um, there is a lot of hostility against immigrants today and there is increasing evidence that that type of hostility is a form of stressful life experience that has negative effects on health. Um, I think, y you know, there are resources in communities and what happens in many communities, there are more resources available than uh, 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 that are being used. Um, one research project I was involved with, um, it was looking at the impact of the SB 1070 uh, bill in Arizona that, that authorized local police officials um, to stop anyone that looked as if they were illegal. And uh, a colleague of mine had a cohort of, of Latinas that she was following over time. And we could look at their utilization of health services and social services before the bill was passed and after the bill was passed. And what we found was that after the bill was passed, there was a decline, and these are mothers using seeking services for their kids, preventive health services and social services. There was a decline in the use of those services, and the decline was biggest among U.S.-born Latinas. So among those who were, at, in, in one sense you could think of, uh, least vulnerable to the new legislation, were those where we saw the, the largest decline. Suggesting, we don't know for sure, but suggesting that that was just an affront to their dignity, that, that there was this threat that they had to experience. So we need to think of of the supports we provide to immigrant communities, but we really need to focus on the policies and the education that needs to take place, that we remind um, uh, Americans that all of us, except for the Native Americans, are immigrants or descendants of immigrants, and we need to create a, a welcoming environment, supportive of all, and that we build into our system 
policies that support and respect the dignity of everyone. Thank you so much, Professor Williams, for taking the time to talk with us. Good to be here. Thank you. APHA TV has more exclusive content you can check out by clicking on the links to the right. Be sure to check back each day for brand new interviews, stories, and more from the conference. You can revisit past years of APHA TV by visiting our channel.